I wanted to take some time to revisit what happened on September 14, 2015 in southern Utah with the flash floods that hit Colorado City Hilldale and Zion National Park. This was really a set of tragic events that took place. <clears throat> and it's really unprecedented, so I, I wanted to dig in a little more into detail to find out exactly what happened here and you know how, how it all came together to result in as many fatalities as it did, which is really unprecedented in the history of Utah. So what you have here is uh, the Arizona-Utah state line right here. Colorado City and Hilldale are here. And I've outlined above the two communities the drainage basin that drains the main wash, Short Creek, that goes through the middle of the two communities. And what's interesting is um, there's a couple of smaller washes that drop in on the west side over here. And those are actually what contributed, at least this, this one here, to the vehicles getting washed away. And so what we have is... Above Colorado City, there's a lot of exposed slick rock sandstone. And so rain that falls up here is not really going to absorb into the ground as readily. And the water is going to pick up a lot of speed because of the steep terrain. So there was two rain events that happened this day on the 14th. So when I pull up the reflectivity images for that day, drop the opacity a little bit on them. The storms kind of started firing off. If I zoom out a little bit here, you can see the outline of the basin. We had some storms fire off to the west of Colorado City. And they moved through and landed a direct hit on not just the larger basin as a whole, but pay attention to this green outlined area here. You can see there's purple coloration in the radar reflectivity, which indicates very heavy rainfall and possibly hail. And as the storm moved through, it hit very heavy right over this area. And that was around 2.30 Utah time. And of course, the same thing over further up Short Creek. And the storm only came through, it blew through in about a half hour. And it caused flash flooding. But this was a little earlier in the afternoon. So what I imagine took place is people were interested to come and view the flash flooding. So they came out to see what was going on. Well, there was another set of storms that was forming to the south of Colorado City. Those came in from the west, heading northeast. Then there's a set of storms that comes up from the south, heading north. And as we scrub forward through here, in time, coming up from the south is another line of even more powerful thunderstorms. And they blow through Colorado City at around 4.30 Utah time. And if you remember what we were seeing earlier with the purple coloration over this smaller bowl-shaped area, you can see this storm landed a direct hit almost in the exact same area with even more intense rainfall at around 4.30 Utah time. And this is the actual, this is the same set of storms that later, just a few minutes later, moved north into Zion National Park and hit Keyhole Slot Canyon, which also resulted in seven people losing their lives. And so here in Colorado City we have this storm pummeling this really small area. This is not a huge basin here. I mean, the wash itself is small. Everything about it is, is not that large. And it got a very heavy, very heavy rainfall in a very short period of time. You know, that was just a 10 or 15 minute window where this thing is just getting hammered. And they estimate that as this line came through, it dumped about an inch and a half of rain in 30 minutes. So that is about a 1 in 100 year flood event. So if we take a look at this situation here, we'll follow this, this wash down. If 
from where the heavy rain hit into Colorado City, actually into Hilldale. So take a look at where this wash comes in. So if you zoom in real close in Google Earth, you can see there's definitely a wash here, but it's not that big. Uh, it's kind of hidden in the trees here, and it comes down. You see it kind of splits right here. It eventually crosses Canyon Street in this area, and there's no culvert it looks like. It looks like it just goes over the highway. You see some repair work they've had to do here in the past. And then eventually dumps into Short Creek past the, the houses here. So the best of what I can figure out happened that day is this heavy rain pummeled this area twice. The first time, it saturated and flooded. And so there was enough saturation to cause runoff and flooding to come down through here, through Canyon Street. And so it must have drawn some attention to the area because it was already flowing by the time you see the two vans get carried down in the video. The second line of storms came through and dumped even more rain in about the same amount of time. So with the ground already fully saturated, runoff already happening, you can pretty well assume that all of the rain that fell out of the second storm was going to run off into this wash. And take a look at the core, the heavy rain core of this second set of storms as it came through here. You can see it was very large and was dumping a lot of moisture over that basin right there. I mean, this, this is just the most intense core of the thunderstorm as it came through. Massive amount of rainfall fell out of this thing. And so what I presume happened is this area outlined in green flooded probably bigger than anybody has ever seen in the area all of this rain from the second storm quickly gathered up and started cascading down this wash as a flash flood another flash flood and from what I can tell in the videos it looks like in this area here some people had come down in two vans and parked right about here to watch the water flow and the neighbor filming would have been standing in this area here and in the video you can see the flood actually travel down this road and then down this road here right in front of their house and so that means that the height of the flood as it came through must have been around this area here maybe even a little larger than this. So as the heavy rain from this thunderstorm comes barreling down this wash, the people in these vans would have had no idea that the flood had already jumped its banks further up the wash. And so what must have happened is the front wall came from behind the vehicles and then washed them down into this basin further down into Colorado City. It's just an absolute tragedy. There's no way that anybody would have ever guessed that this wash would get that big right here. It's just a little creek and it it flooded gargantuan because of the second storm that came through and dumped all of that rain. Now as we get back a little further here you can see the core from that second storm as it went through. It continues on its way further north and does not lose any intensity. So this is around 430 Utah. As we scope forward through time here, The storm makes a direct hit on Keyhole Canyon, which is the basin of which is only about two and a half miles. It's very small drainage area. All, almost all of it is disposed sandstone slick rock, much like above Colorado City. A lot of the water is going to run off, and 
The slot canyon itself is about here. This is the highway coming into Zion National Park. And so this heavy rain area in the purple here, as I scrub from the frame, when it hits at about 4.49 Utah time to the next frame, you can see it covered the entire basin in this heavier purplish, whitish radar reflectivity in the um, very high ranges of what you can have as far as rainfall goes. Just massive amount of rain falling. Rain stations picked up about six tenths of an inch in under a half hour. So it's possible that in this area right here it got more. It's just very sad set of circumstances here. This basin being very much like Colorado City, the runoff would have happened extremely quickly and the basin being so short, the runoff would have gotten to the slot canyon well before anyone in there would have had a chance to get out. So that resulted in the seven fatalities in Zion National Park. Today news is coming out that another individual in a vehicle lost his life further about 15 miles to the west of Colorado City as well. I don't have any details on that as far as where his vehicle was recovered, but it's most likely that it was the same set of storms that came through that's responsible for that as well. So on this you can see the core of heaviest rain from the same storm a few minutes later after it passed through Colorado City and Hilldale and it was hitting Zion National Park. So my heart goes out to these families. I hope they're able to find peace after losing so many loved ones. But it serves as a reminder that we live in an extremely unpredictable area. And if you're going to go out to try and watch a flash flood, make sure you do it from a very high safe location.